Hey, what's up everybody? Tech Checker here and we finally get to do a review of the NECA GameStop exclusive Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie Splinter, Shredder, and Foot Soldiers. I was so bummed when I missed out on the San Diego Comic-Con set, but NECA really came through for us collectors and we have this GameStop exclusive set. We're gonna go ahead and do a review of these things. Can't do a side-by-side -side comparison of the two sets because eh, I don't have the San Diego Comic-Con set, but it is what it is. So let's not waste any more time. Let's go ahead and crack these things open and take a closer look. Here they are out of the packaging. These things look spectacular. I think NECA did an amazing job with the likeness on each of these figures. So let's go ahead and do a quick deep dive on each of these and then we'll get into the articulation on them. Now if you can't tell which one is the melee and which is the bladed, that is because the actual figures are pretty much exactly the same. There are blue highlights that they've put throughout the figures which really adds to the quality of these figures. I absolutely love it. They each have the arm guard pieces, which is awesome. They are not glued on. Um, so that can get a little bit frustrating if they kind of slide out of position. The belts have a little bit of brown accent painted on each of them. And because they must have either been hand painted or I don't know how they did it, uh, they all have slight differences in them, which is really nice. Uh, the heads, they all are the same head, which is pretty cool. Uh, the thing that I know some people People have wondered is is do these heads come off yes they do one thing that I would like to do is find an unmasked head uh, of some sort that's fairly generic that I could throw on these guys now the hard part is is because like Marvel Legends are a little bit shorter than these um, those heads might not fit so well the butt pieces here are kind of a softer uh, rubbery plastic that uh, NECA is known for doing and it works really well. Uh, the feet, they have some paint on them as though they've kind of walked in some mud which is really cool. Uh, it's just overall the paint and sculpt on these things is absolutely phenomenal. Now let's take a look at Splinter. They did a amazing job with this thing. The thing that I love the most is his, uh, I think it's a gi and it is so well done you can see the the uh, discoloration that they've done on this thing it looks so worn and tattered they've got great holes throughout and they've got holes in areas that would make sense both elbows have a hole in them which is superb i love it i love that you've got little strings hanging out as well which is really good the sculpt of the actual body on this thing is amazing there's so many details sculpted into this guy and then the paintwork that they've done is absolutely amazing the eyes look perfect uh, even the ear that is uh, uh cut off by shredder is displayed on here as well. And one of the things that I was a little concerned with is his little beard tuft. Uh, I was a little worried that that might break off, but the good thing is, is it is a very soft and pliable rubber. And so I don't think you're gonna have any issues with that breaking off. The eyes alone are absolutely magnificent. Uh, they even painted uh, his body underneath this gi and it looks so good. They did a great job with all of this. The wraps on his legs and ankles look amazing. Let's get into something that I don't like. I cannot stand this belt. With everything else being so nice and worn and painted perfectly, this little ribbon that they used is too perfect looking. And when it comes out of the box, they actually have the knot on the front and I think that is accurate. The problem with it is is it's so big and it doesn't have any real pliability that it gets in the way of his face and it's just kind of ugly looking. So for right now I've got it wrapped double around him uh, and tied in the back because it just it just was in the way. It didn't look good and I just couldn't stand it. So um, that's my biggest issue with this particular figure. And then last we have Master Shredder again. NECA did an absolutely phenomenal job. There is kind of an iridescent purplish indigo color paint, and there's also kind of a glittery look. So it kind of sparkles in the light, which is awesome. All of his armor is 
dry brushed so well. The helmet looks absolutely amazing. All of these spikes on his wrist cuffs, uh, wrist gauntlets are relatively pliable, so you're not likely to break them. And again, his uh, claws on his hands, these look so good. The uh, middle sash is technically two different uh, types of fabric or material, which the uh, the foot also has this. The top portion is kind of a, an actual fabric, and then the bottom portion is more of a rubber. Uh, the little tie parts are soft and will move around, so that is not going to break on you. The shin Oh my gosh, these shins look amazing. And there's detail sculpted throughout. There's little like rivets along the outer edges. That is awesome. The feet don't really have any paint on them. And so they kind of stand out a little bit more than I think they should have. And then the face mask comes off and we can see his face underneath. You can see the scratches that Splinter put on so many years ago on his face. I was a little bit concerned that uh, they weren't going to allow us to take this off. I thought, well, that would be just a, a massive fail. To put it back on and get it to get it to clip on, uh, instead of having real ears, he's got little tab ears. So this just tabs on, and so the ears are what hold it into position. And it can get a little tricky to get that popped back on. But once you got it back on, it's not going anywhere. This little neck collar piece, which is a floating piece, it does not attach and that can get frustrating when you're putting his cape on so let's take a look at this cape because i have to say this cape is amazing this thing is pretty much see-through so if you're going to be shining pretty bright lights on this guy for photography that could cause some issues but they made this thing so well uh, they it just Everything that they did about this thing is great. It's got little wires, bendy wires in here so that it will stay in position. Putting this cape on can be a little frustrating because of this uh, little collar piece, but if you work at it to get the cape to go up and over, you want it to go over the collar piece, and then it's just got like a regular jeweler's uh, clasp on there. Uh, I will definitely be displaying him with his cape on. And then the cool part too is, is you can, just like in the movie, wrap this up and over his shoulders, so that way you can have, now it's a little hard because it gets bunchy, but you can display him like he was in the movies, you're in the movie with his shoulder spikes out, which is pretty cool. All right, who's interested to see how tall these things are? Well, let's check out the foot soldier first. And he is coming in at about six, a little over six and three quarter inches tall. Uh, remember, these are not scaled necessarily for Marvel Legends, uh, which is 1 12th scale. These are closer to maybe a 1 10th scale, um, 1 11th scale. Shredder's coming in at exactly seven inches, ah, just a little bit higher with the helmet piece. And Splinter, the short guy, he's coming in at five and a quarter. Uh, if you stretched him out a little bit more, you might be able to get him to five and a half. And oh, I don't know why I'm measuring him again. And here is your Deadpool Marvel Legends figure in with them. Uh, you know, you could mix these a little bit, but they are definitely far taller. Here is Mikey from the San Diego Comic-Con GameStop exclusive set. That scales very well. I think that's pretty close. Here is an SH Figure Arts turtle. And here's the DC Collectibles Leonardo. Obviously, you're not going to be mixing these. At least I don't think you are. And then a NECA cartoon shredder. Not bad. Not bad at all. All right, let's take a look at the articulation. Uh, most of it is very good on these. There's just one or two things that I don't care for. Uh, on these foot soldiers first, the heads are on a ball peg and the neck is on a maybe double ball peg? I'm not sure. They are able to look up a good amount. That is really nice. And then they're able to look down quite far. That's really good as well. He can look side to side. There's no issues. And then you throw in that neck joint and look at that. Going to what would be the figure's right, 
is a little bit more limited. I don't know why that is. And I've heated it up. But yeah, there's lots of articulation, uh, range of motion with that. There is a ball hinge in the shoulder. Uh, this uh, shoulder piece is somewhat soft, but uh, not really soft. So just be careful when you're moving that around. He is able to move his uh, shoulder back and forth like so. And then he has a joint in the upper elbow I guess it would be and there are double jointed elbows so he's able to bend his elbows more than halfway hit all of these with heat before you do anything with them lots of heat so you do not break them wrists all have hinges and they curl in pretty good curl up pretty decent down in the torso this is where I'm kind of disappointed but not a lot there is no upper torso joint that I could find nothing really happens there there is a waist swivel and I believe it's a ball peg or a double ball peg uh, the range of motion is kind of limited it doesn't go very far but He's able to crunch forward about that far. Not terrible, but also not good. And he's able to back, arch his back about that far. He is able to swivel, like I said. There's a little bit of side to side, but not a whole heck of a lot. You're not getting much out of that. Down in the hips, he's got T-jointed ball joints in those hips. And if you're careful, that's pretty good. That is very good. He's able to kick forward this much. Not too bad. And then he's able to kick his leg back about that far, which is really good. There is an upper thigh swivel that works good. Kind of sticky on mine. Here's another issue that I have with the knees. The top one is fine, and that also swivels. But it's the bottom joint that is really difficult to get uh, to bend. And it's the ratchet. It almost seems as though there's one giant ratchet that really holds it tight. And so be very careful when you heat that thing up because once you heat it up, what happens is the plastic gets kind of gummy and rather than it, you know, activating past that ratchet, it might stretch the plastic. So be careful with that one. But he has a great range of motion with that knee once you get it to go. And then down in the ankle he has a ball hinge can get his foot back about that far and only able to get the foot forward let's oh gosh please don't break he can only get his ankle forward or his foot forward that much that is disappointing i don't like that there is an ankle rocker that works good articulation on these foot soldiers is really quite good now with master splinter because his body is very different from all of the rest i wanted to take this gi and open it so that you could kind of see a little bit more of what's going on so on his head he has a ball peg and he's able to look up a little bit but then there is another neck piece that's also on i believe a double ball peg and he can once you activate now this double ball peg comes off pretty easily but once you kind of finagle it you can really get him looking oops almost all the way up that is awesome and then looking down again if you get that neck piece activated as well he's able to look down a decent amount not a huge amount but he is able to look side to side and then there's lots of range of tilt on that head as well now going down into the torso because we'll, we'll do the arms in just a second there are one two three joints right in his torso that is a lot of joints and so he's got the ability to really activate a lot of range of motion to be able to look all the way up and then to be able to kind of crunch forward and because of this gi jacket thing, um, it covers up a lot of that, which is cool. But they sculpted it so well that it really doesn't need to be covered. You can barely see it. I mean, it just looks like it's different layers of, of fur, which is really cool. Moving into the shoulders, I had to heat these up a lot to be able to get these shoulders to go. And I'm hoping that they, yep, there we go. So he's got a ball hinge in his shoulder open this thing up so that you can kind of see what direction it's going so at least you get a, a good understanding of what this thing looks like first but he's able to get his arm out about 90 degrees there is i believe a double jointed elbow maybe it's a single joint i can't remember but he's able to get his arm bent 
about that far. That's pretty good. I'm happy with that. There is a swivel at that elbow, and in the wrist, he's got the tiniest, tiniest little hinge, and he's able to get, oh, and that, that joint is tiny as well, or the peg is tiny, but he's able to curl his hand down that much, and he's able to, whoop, if it doesn't pop off every time, he's able to get that curled up a decent amount. I don't like how short this is. There's no reason that they couldn't have made that a little bit longer. So that, I guess, is my biggest gripe there. Uh, but, you know, it's not that big of a deal. Down in the hips, he's got T-jointed ball joints in his hips, and he's actually able to do close to the splits. Now, his tail's going to get in the way so that he's not going to be down flat, but whatever, that's fine. And then he is able to kick forward about that far. That's, you know, about 90 degrees. That's awesome. And then kicking backwards, that's actually pretty good as well. He is able to swivel that. That's awesome. There is a single jointed knee. Uh, the knee is pre-bent or it's sculpted in a bit of a bend. And then you add in that joint and he's able to get his leg bent just over 90 degrees, which is pretty sweet. There is a, let's see, yep, it does swivel at that knee. And then down in the ankle, there is a hinge. This starts getting very thin. Makes me nervous, but he's able to bend his foot or his leg all the way, which is pretty cool. Um, it does it does swivel as well, that so that helps. And then there is also a toe hinge, which is pretty cool. Uh, and then also the tail is on a peg, so you can twist that, and it is a bendy tail, so you can bend it pretty much how you want. Um, it does feel a little rigid so it doesn't always stay in position but once you get it kind of in good position then you can easily stand him I, I think i heard some people complaining about how hard he was to stand up and once you use that tail so that you've got a third point touching the ground i mean he's really easy to, he's probably the easiest one to get to stand for me and lastly shredder has essentially all the same articulation that the foot does. Uh, his head is on a ball peg. Uh, because of the helmet, he's only able to look up about that far. He is able to look down about that much, which is really good. He's got side-to-side -side motion galore that doesn't have any issues, and then he's got lots of range of motion for the tilt on that head. In the shoulders, he also has that ball hinge that works pretty good, only able to get out that far, but you know, not too shabby. He's able to swivel that arm around, and and that's pretty good. Same elbows, basically. There is a swivel at the top of the elbow, and then there is a hinge uh, at the top and bottom of this. Uh, because it starts getting a little bit thin, that plastic, just be careful so that you don't uh, break it. But putting it up like that, he can get over 90 degrees, which is nice. I believe it swivels also at the bottom of the elbow. Again, he's got those hinges in the wrists. He can curl his wrist forward that much which is pretty good and then he can bring it up oops i popped it out but he can get his wrist up about that much again no torso articulation other than in the waist and that is pretty much the same as the foot he can swivel he can kind of twist side to side a little bit and then he can crunch forward only about that far and crunch back about that far down in the hips he's got those t-jointed ball joints in the hips and if you're careful and you've heated everything up you should be able to get him into a full split which is awesome he is able to kick forward about this far just a little shy of 90 degrees he is able to kick back a pretty good amount that i'm very happy with that and then he does have an upper thigh swivel down in the knees, he's got the exact same knees that the foot soldiers do, so be very careful with that bottom joint so that you don't break it, but he's got pretty good range of motion. And then down in the ankle, he has, again, that same hinge, can get his foot back that far, and then he can only get his foot forward that far. That is disappointing. There is an ankle rocker which works pretty well on these. Mine are really tight. As far as accessories go, uh, the foot soldiers come with far more. You can see how much they've got versus what Shredder comes with, which is this section, and then Splinter comes with the absolute least. Uh, we do get the TCRI canister of ooze that uh, those of you that missed out on the what would it be, the 2018 
SDCC uh, exclusive. Now you can have the canister of ooze. And then we get a set of um, nunchucks. The cool thing about these nunchucks, I believe, I think it's cool, is instead of the string that they did last time, is they've put in kind of a bendy wire, probably the same wire that they are using for the cape. I like this, except for the fact that now you can't have like a resting look where it's just, I mean, you can, you can kind of bend it so it looks like it's resting. Um, but I think this is a better execution than the string that they were using anyway. So I'm, I'm happy with that. And then we also get another slice of pizza. I am going to say, um, we can lay off the slices of pizza now. At least for me, I've got more than enough. I don't really need more slices of pizza. But anyway, uh, one thing that I would have liked is some alternate hands for splinter. That would have been nice. This is the melee set. Uh, you get four hands, additional hands. You get two open hands and two, uh, what are these? These are gripping hands so that he can hold his weapons. You come, he comes with a bow staff. Not really any paint. It's all just black. And then he comes, both of them come with an alternate bandana so that then they can have it on either side. They come with these two uh, melee billy club things. I don't know what they're called. There's no real paint aside from their black. Uh, they look nice. They've got some nice sculpting in there. Moving down to the bladed, uh, he comes with this axe, battle axe sort of thing, which is really cool. There is some nice paint detail on the blade, which is very nice. Uh, it's all very clean looking, which is great. You got the extra bandana. He comes with two, a, or a full set of size which is nice. These are, you know, a little bit smaller than, uh, I believe, Raphael's. Yeah, they're definitely smaller than Raphael's, but they're very nicely done. I accidentally blew one of the hands, the extra open hand. Oh, wait, I can't find it. But he does come with four additional hands, and then he also comes with this samurai sword katana, which is very nicely done. And then Shredder comes with this pike, if you remember, near the end of the movie when he's got, uh, I think it was Michelangelo. No, it was Raph. I think it was Raph down and uh yeah so he used this in the movie and then he comes with two nunchucks this one which is just black with the uh, little uh, wire thing and then this one which i really like this this thing looks really good it's got these little spike like things in the handle and that looks so good they're painted really nicely and then you've got this very very fine chain lots of the time the chains that they use are much bigger this is a perfectly scaled chain in my opinion so this nunchuck is absolutely amazing looking and then he also comes with this little dagger and sheath which is pretty cool and this thing looks very nice uh, i do need to cut this little extra plastic tag off that didn't uh, get taken off at the factory but it, it fits nicely into this little sheath and it looks pretty darn good and then he also comes with four additional hands uh two with the larger um blades on the hands and then two without anything on the hands so overall accessory wise uh, you're getting the best bang for your buck accessory wise with the foot soldiers but obviously there's a little bit more involved in shredder and splinter and shredder also comes with that cape which we showed you before Alrighty, there you have it folks i hope you enjoyed this review if you did make sure you hit that like button hit the subscribe button if you haven't already leave a comment below what do you think of this set versus last year's turtle set uh, are you excited for what they might come up with next I'm really hoping to have an April O'Neil. I'm really hoping to have a Casey Jones. I'd also like to see, uh, I forget the guy's name, who was alongside Shredder. I'd like to see him. Uh, heck, Danny, that'd be kind of cool to have Danny <laughs> and maybe Danny's dad, uh, whatever the guy's name is from the newspaper, that would be cool as well. Honestly, I want everybody. I'll take extras from you know people that aren't even credited. I'll take some of them as well. I just want them to keep bringing more and more to this wave. So let me know in the comments below what you'd like to see next from NECA. And until next time, I will see you later.